fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, hurry, big fellow, I'm Silver, hurry! The Lone Ranger and Tonto had arranged to meet in a former campsite in the woods. The Indian had been there for over an hour. He'd cleared away the underbrush cut a supply of firewood, and taken several trout from a nearby stream before the Lone Ranger arrived. Oh, there's Silver Hobo. It's steady. Easy. Tonto knew at a glance that the masked man had been delayed by some unusual circumstance. Steady, big fella. I see you've been here over an hour, Tonto. That's right. Did you uh, stop in town for supplies? Uh, we got all we need. Tonto, while you were in town, did you hear of any trouble? No. Why, you ask? Something's happened. How you know? You go through town? No, I came from the opposite direction. Well, why you say something happened? Well, uh, three miles north of here, I saw a group of men approaching. I kept out of sight in an arroyo until they passed. They were led by a deputy sheriff. Oh. Then, a few minutes later, I saw a second group of lawmen. Half a mile from here, I saw the third posse. Oh. Toto, there's a manhunt going on. You talk to any posse? No, I didn't want to answer questions until I knew more about the situation. What's the matter, Silver? A uh, lawman not see you? Oh, I'm sure they didn't. After passing the first group, I took pains to hide the track. Silver, act like someone come this way. What is it, Silver? You sure you're not followed? Well, I thought I... Over there. Low branch move. Yes, I saw it. You're covered. It girl. Don't make a move. There's sudden death in each barrel of this shotgun. You needn't hold that gun Get on. Get those hands up and keep them up. I've gone through brambles up to my neck. You certainly have. Those scratches must be painful. They are. And I didn't take them to let you get away from me now that I've got the drop on you. Get your hands up, outlaw. Well, I'm not an outlaw. Don't I... tell me that. I saw you when you ducked into the arroyo near our house to get out of the way of the posse. You followed me from there? Yes. I, I wonder how big a price is on your head. If you count on a reward for my capture, reward. you... Reward? What I want is a lot bigger than a reward, mister. My uh, mask had given you the wrong impression... I avoided the lawman because I... don't I... care why you avoided them. I'm not the one they're hunting. I know that. Oh? Now will you get your hands up? No. Then keep them at your sides. But don't make a fast move or I'll let go both barrels. And I mean it, stranger. How did you follow me? You're, you're going to help me. Help you? Do what I say and, and in a couple of days you can leave here and I won't interfere. Otherwise, I'll turn you over to the law. <laughs> 
Maybe. Hold it, hold it, Tonto. Why is that Indian grinning? Oh, pay no attention to Tonto. Tonto? Is that his name? Yes. What's yours? Do you think you'd get the right name from a masked man? Well, no, I, I suppose not. Is there any reason to keep your name a secret? My name is Cutler. Gail Cutler. Gail? That's a nice name. Does it mean anything? The name Cutler, I mean? Never heard it. Have you been in town? Oh, not for several months. Then you don't know what happened. No. It's just as well. Are you going to tell me? No. But uh, you said you needed help. I... I need the help of a man that's got nerve. One that can use guns. You look like that kind of hombre. Do you want a gunman? I don't want anyone shot, if that's what you mean. I want a man that can take care of himself. That's all you've got to do. That doesn't sound difficult. You, you might find it harder than you expect. Oh? You'll have to go to my home and wear a special shirt. A shirt? One that I'll give you. You'll have to bandage your head and part of your face. You can keep your identity a secret as far as I'm concerned. The, the bandage will take the place of that mask. Very well. Then what am I to do? Nothing. Just stay in the house. From the time you get there, you'll have to govern your actions by the things that happen. How long am I to stay there? A couple of days. Then if, if you're able to leave, you, you'll be free to go. I guess the Indian will have to go with you. Very well. You'll do it? Yes. Then, then we'll start for the house at once. It, it'll be dark by the time we get there. Aren't you going to take our weapons? Look, mister, you, you're not fooling me. What do you mean? I... I thought at first you were just a cheap crook, scared to show his face. I thought you'd sooner take orders from me than, than answer to the sheriff. I'm willing to take orders from you. But not because of any threats I've made. Possibly not. Then why are you doing it? I'm interested. Why? You must be in real trouble, or you'd never have done this. Then you really mean to, to go through with it? Yes. But it's dangerous. Oh, I wish I could tell you more about it. You can't? No, I... No, hang it all. Why aren't you an ornery weasel that should be shot instead of, of a nice-speaking man with fine eyes? I, I can't take you and your friend to be shot. If we're going to your house, uh, let's get started. The Cutler house was a rambling affair of one story. It was dark by the time the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived with the attractive girl. She lighted a lamp in one room and gave the masked man a brilliantly colored shirt and many yards of bandage with instructions for its use. Then she left the men for a few moments while Tonto covered the Lone Ranger's head and part of his face with the white gauze. The Lone Ranger had just pulled on the shirt when Gail returned to the room. I, I put out plenty of food for your horses. They're in stalls in the barn. They'll have running water. Well, thanks, Gail. Is this bandage as you want it? Yes, it's all right. How's the shirt? Oh, a little snug, but I can wear it. It isn't too late to back out. We'll not back out. I, I hate to think of what might happen to you. I, I wish... Can, uh, can you give us any further information? I... I can only tell you that men will try to kill you. Why? I can't tell you anything else. I wish I could. I, oh, I do wish I could, but I can't. Very well. All of the windows are fastened on the inside. The doors have heavy bolts. Good. You'll find plenty of food in the kitchen. Where will you be? You'll not see me again. I, I'm going to leave you here alone. For how long? If you're here, the day after tomorrow, then everything will be all right. Just leave, that's all. Well, what about these men you said were going to try to kill us? I, I don't know what to tell you. Protect yourself. That's all I can say. Take care of yourself. We'll do our best. Goodbye. Adios. Good luck to you. Oh, plenty strange, Kimasabi. Tonto, that girl is more worried than anyone I've ever seen. Mm, that's right. I wonder what lies back of all this. Why you wear bandy? Yes, with a brilliant shirt. You got ID? I think the girl's afraid of some man or group of men. She thinks they'll come here, and she wanted a gunman to greet them. Oh. But I don't see why she insisted on the shirt and the bandage. Maybe we find out plenty soon. Yes, I think we shall. There go girl, her right way. According to her story, we're all alone in this house. Ah. She said all the doors and windows were fastened. That's right. Bring that lamp. We'll make sure of it before we settle down to wait for the killer.
When the Lone Ranger and Tonto inspected the windows, they found them all locked on the inside. They came to the third door and found that it was fastened just as the others had been, fastened by a large, heavy bolt. Oh, it's on the inside, Tonto. Gail Cutler couldn't have left the house and fastened these bolts behind her. Not right. How then did she leave? We hear her go, here right way. Yes, I know it. How did she get out of here? While the Lone Ranger and Tonto sought the answer to the mystery of the locked doors, three men met in the darkness near the Cutler house. Now, I'd say that you after... shut up, Gimp. It ain't for you to say. Grider's the boss, and he gives the orders. Jake, sometimes you talk good sense. Oh, if it hadn't have been for you, Grider, the posse would have had us before now. Yeah, and then where'd you two be? You'd be in jail awaiting trial and hanging. I was only going to say that after tonight, we'd be in the clear. That depends on how good you can follow orders, Gimp. Me? Yes, you. Me and Jake did the most of the work at the bank. I did my part. You didn't finish your part. You left a witness that can hang all three of us. But Grider, I... Listen, you rat-faced worm. Jake got the cash from the bank, and I got the banker. If you'd have done a permanent job on old Cutler, we'd have been in the clear. Besides that, he don't know your voice. I tried to You're going to have what ain't give to many men. You're going to have a second chance. Cutler's in his house right now. Seen him a little while ago. So did I. You... You seen him? Yes, before you got here. Sitting in the front room with his head all wrapped in a bandage. I'm surprised he's able to sit up. I thought my bullet done more damage than that. He's sitting up. I seen him through the window. And so did I. You're, you're sure it was Cutler? There's no mistake in that bright shirt he always wears. Well, I, I'll do what I can. Go ahead. Me and Jake will wait right here. You, you got any suggestions as to how to go about it, Grider? I always got a suggestion. Now, here's the scheme. Gail Cutler ain't there. Where is she? She rode away before you joined us. B- before it got so dark? It was dark, but we seen her ride past a window that had a light in it. Oh. Cutler and an Indian are in the house right now. An Indian? Yeah. Likely a cook or something. You just go and rap on the door. Either the red skin or Cutler will answer. If they ask who's rapping and what you want, you say you've got important news from Miss Gail, savvy? Uh, I guess so. They'll open the door, and as soon as they do, you shoot. Now, don't wait for no talk. Just shoot fast. You got two guns and see that you make them both talk loud. Then what? Then what? Why, you idle brain fool, then we're all in the clear. The law can suspicion us all it wants to, but it can't prove nothing. Cutler's the only witness there is against us. Oh, I savvy. Now, get going. We'll wait right here. All right, Grider. I'll be back as soon as I can make it. <laughs> well, what do you think, Grider? Well, Gim's a dead shot. He'll get Cutler this time. Beats me how he missed getting him last night. But the weasel is yellow. Yeah, I know he is. If he's caught and questioned, he's, he's likely to squeal. Mm-hmm. I've been thinking about that, Jake. I wonder. Have you been thinking along the same lines as I have? Maybe. A two-way split of what we got would mean a lot more than a three-way split. Yeah, it would. Gimp ain't much good to us. Besides that, he don't have any sense. If he had money to spend, he'd spend it in such a way as to make folks suspect things. Jake, let's shove over a little closer to that house. Yeah, come on. Can you see Gimp? I can just about make him out. Stuck as the inside of a pocket at the bottom of a well. Is that him at the rear door? Yeah. There's a light in the kitchen. When the door is open, you'll make a mighty easy target. You got your gun handy? Yeah. Now, let's get a little closer, then we'll get set. If Gimp doesn't get in a couple of sure shots, we can finish the job for him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. A short time later, Gimp knocked at the door of the Cutler home. The rear door, Tonto. Ah. Careful. Don't cross any windows while there's a light in the room. It'd make a good target for someone outside. Me, no. Who is it? Mr. Cutler. He thinks I'm Mr. Cutler. I've got a message for you. I'm home. From your daughter. From Miss Gale. What's the message? It's uh, written out. I've got to hand it to you. Read it to me. I can't. It's too dark. All right. Wait a minute. I'll let you in. Lone Ranger slid back the bolt of the kitchen door. Then he nodded quietly to Tonto and called to the man outside. Door's unlocked. Come in. Where are you? Hey, get this roof off me. Let me loose. Hold it tight, Tonto. Let me got it. Shut that door. Someone out there fired on him. Oh, the double crossers. Oh, they hit this man. Him hit hard. Tell me, who did it? Double crosser. You had a gun in your hand. You came here to get Cutler, didn't you? They, they didn't. Hello. Him gone. Did you hear what he said? He called them double crossers. Uh, he said they didn't want to divide with him. That right. That means there's something to divide. Uh, we learned another thing, Kimosabe. Gail Cutler has a father, and her father probably has a bandage on his head. Uh, there's some way out of this house. Some way that girl used. I'm going to find it and get out. Go out door? You saw what happened when that door opened. Every door might be watched in the same way. We've looked all through this floor. I'm going to look in the cellar. Me go? Come along. I remember seeing a trap door on the floor of the next room. Fetch lamp? Yes, bring that one. We'll light it when we get below. What we do when we get out of the house? I want to carry the fight to the men who killed their partner. That's better than staying here and waiting for someone to come to us. Uh, here's the trap door. Uh, <laughs> stairs go down there. Yeah, just a minute, I'll light a match. Pick the chimney off that lamp. Uh. And there, it's going. Let me take it, I'll go ahead. Uh. Oh. Kimasabi. Yes. You hear someone? I thought I did. Sound like groan. Yes. Where are you? Oh. Sounded over that way, Tonto. Ah. There he is, on that pallet in the corner. Don't kill her. His head is bandaged, just as mine is. That right. Don't. Kill her. She didn't harm anyone. Mr. Cutler. Who... Who are you? You're hurt. Mr. Cutler. Mr. Cutler, can you hear me? I... I can hear you. But who... Gail. Gail brought us here to help you. Grider. Grider will kill... Grider? Wait. Who is Grider? He... He will kill Gail. Cutler, now listen to me carefully. We're here to help you. Your enemies are outside this house. I... I know. Gail told me to be still, quiet. I want to get out of here. How can I leave from this cellar? There, there's a door, a, a tunnel over there. Just one thing for us to do. We got to get up closer to that house. Yeah. We don't know about Gimp. Well, I don't think he got Cutler. Didn't look like he fired his gun. And I didn't hear it. Nor I. Well, we'll slip up close to the house and let Cutler have it through the window. If we can see him. Oh, just a minute, Jake. Is that someone moving over there? Where? See? Next to the house. It is. Let him have it. We got no friends around here. Fire on him. <laughs> Who's that? Fire again. Oh, my hand. I'll show him. Don't shoot. I'm warning you. No. Oh, you got him. Ryder, Ryder, don't leave me. Wait. It's spread out. Hide in the dark. In the meantime, Gail had gone to the town's largest house where Squire Miggs lived. He was the most influential and the most important man in the community. 
Gail told him about the mask man. And you left this mask man in your house, dressed in your father's shirt and wearing a bandage on his head, didn't you? Yes, Squire Miggs. You see, father's the only one who can identify those robbers. So I heard. I think he gave a description of them, didn't he? Yes. And where is your father? I left him in the basement of the house. If those crooks come to finish the job they started, to kill Dad, they'll get this other man instead. Very clever of you, Gail. Very clever indeed. But uh, why have you come here? What do you want of me? Squire Miggs, this was no ordinary robbery. You know that. What do you mean, my dear? Those crooks had an inside track. They knew when there'd be a lot of extra money in the bank. They knew the best time to strike. They also knew the best way to enter. Yes, that is true. Why, they even had keys. Someone that's mighty close to the banker himself was helping them. It's quite possible. But you still haven't said why you came here. You're the only one I know of that I can trust. But the sheriff... He, he might be the one who helped the killers. Why, Gail, that statement is Well, he ridiculous. hasn't found them yet, has he? No, but that doesn't... He's had mean... men out all day. Besides, he was mighty anxious to know where Dad was. He was? He said he would guard him. More likely, he'd make sure Dad would never testify against the crooks when they were caught. Did you tell him where your father was? No, I, I said he was with his sister, my Aunt Linda. I, I guess he sent men there to stand watch. Very likely. I, I thought if you would use your influence, we, we could get outside help. Outside help? Yes, a, a marshal or someone like that. Tut, tut, my dear. I'm quite sure the sheriff is honest and capable. I think you made a mistake in not letting him place his men around your home. Well, I don't trust him. I, uh, I'm also afraid that you made a mistake in permitting this stranger, this, uh, masked man to stay in your home. You'll probably return to find everything cleaned out. I, I doubt that. All in all, Gail, you have acted very foolishly. As a matter of fact, I think you're badly mistaken about some mysterious leader having aided these criminals. All right, then. I'm sorry I bothered you, Squire Miggs. Now, promise me you'll drop these foolish notions. Oh, of I don't intend and... to drop them. But, my dear, what? If you won't it... try to bring in outside help, I, I'll try to find someone who will. Hey, you are being very silly. Maybe I am. Oh. Who in blazes? Someone rapped on the window. I know. Miggs, open up. Let me in. Confounded fool. Who is it? Stay where you are, Gail. Miggs, I had to see. There was trouble at the Cutler house. There was a masked man what and he... What does he mean? The Cutler girl. What's he doing here? You've made a fine mess of things. Yeah. Sit down there. Squire Miggs. You too, sit down. A gun. You heard me. Take that chair, be quiet. I, I can't believe it. Got it. What happened at the Cutler house? How about her? Never mind the girl. Answer me. Well, we went there, like you said. We saw what we thought was Cutler. Wearing that bright shirt and a lot of bandage on his head. I sent Gimp to finish him. Did he? I don't know. We fired on Gimp to get him out of the way. Then we were closing in to see about Cutler when a couple of hombres come at us, guns a blazing. Oh, I never saw such shooting in my life. How's that? Well, as soon as they saw the flash of our guns, they let us have it. Smashed Jake's hand and hit my shoulder. Then they came at us on the run. Did they get Jake? I think so. Jake will squeal to save his neck. We'll have to do something about him. There won't be much against him if Cutler ain't able to identify him. But if Cutler can identify him, Jake will squeal. Yeah. I'll take care of things. We've got to get Cutler somehow. Well, Gail, you've heard a lot, hmm? I certainly have. Now it's clear why those crooks were able to rob the bank so easily. Yes, I dare say. And, and you tried to tell me I was foolish for thinking the killers had someone helping them. It's, uh... Unfortunate you came here, Gail. Yes, unfortunate for you. Oh, no, no, no. I propose to take care of myself. You don't think I'd let a girl stand between me and freedom, do you? Well, there's more than our freedom at stake, Miggs. Remember, there was a murder involved. Yes, I know. Take the cover from that table and tie the girl's hands. All right. Oh, no, you don't. Not without a fight. Here's the table cover. Let, let me go. You're not going to tie me. Give me a hand, go. Mix. Yeah, right. Go of me. What's the matter? Can't you handle a hundred oh. pound girl? Oh, I could, Touch but my him. shoulder's lame from that bullet. Wait. Oh, that's it. Oh, I hit you on the wrist. You won't get away with it. Uh, that'll hold her. Now then. 
We'll get word to Cutler that his life, his daughter, depends on his ability to forget anything he might say about that robbery. Yeah. My, my dad won't do that. I reckon he will when he learns he'll die if Jake and I are identified. I am indeed sorry, Gail. But you see, if your father identifies Jake, Jake will squeal. That will involve me. You skunk. Of course, your father won't know until after the trial that you were uh, dead. Dead? We finish her now, Miggs? Yes. Make sure she can't get her hands loose. We'll take her to the basement. The gun shot down there can't be heard outside the house. You! Ah, struggle won't get you nowhere. Just take it easy. Here's a gun, Grady. Yeah, good. Mine was smashed. You're right through that door. I'll come behind you. Going somewhere? Hey, what the... You help me! I'll show you! No. Hey, don't shoot! Don't no. shoot me! Shut your hands up! Oh. Grady, you shut up. Oh. You're not going to die from a bullet. Oh. The rope's waiting for you. You? Oh, how did you know? How did you do it? He, he's the head of the gang. Miggs is the head. Yes, I know, Gail. Jake told all he knew. Here. Here come Lowman. Good work, Tonto. Did you tell them? You bet he told me. So did Jake. Sheriff. I'll have you free in a jiffy, Gail. Now, me cut hands free. Miggs, there. keep your hands where they are. Put the handcuffs on him, boys. Grider, too. Hell, wait, you can't Save it for the judge. Jake told all about you. His tongue is going like a prairie fire in the hope of getting off lighter than the rest of you. These polecats were going to kill me. They were going to make Dad think he could save my life by not giving his testimony. Your dad will give his testimony all right, Gail. And for that, you can thank the Lone Ranger. Who? The Lone Ranger? Sure. The gent that you had take your father's place with his head all bandaged. That, that was the Lone Ranger? Where is he? I told you he was a crack shot. No wonder. Sheriff, where'd he go? I, I want to tell him everything. I want to thank him. I... He's gone, Gail. Went out the door with his engine friend. Get him up, scout! I'll send the you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.